Hi, my name is Chris Kepley. I'm an associate professor at the Joint School for Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. I'm an immunologist by trade, and now I dabble in nanomaterials. And when I say nanomaterials, any, we're talking about anything less than 100 nanomaterials or nanometers. And so what I'm going to talk about today is give you kind of overview. You might not have heard of what JSNN, the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. It's a joint venture between North Carolina A&T and UNCG. It's a brand new facility right up the road on 40, $60 million facility full of not, lots of cool toys to study nanomaterials. So we do a lot of outreach as well. So I would encourage you, if you want to bring your students on a field trip to the Joint School for Nanoscience, um, either email Daryl, he can give me your, uh, your contact information, or email me directly. You can just Google me. So what I'm going to talk about today is kind of the model for this uh, joint school, which is um, bringing in faculty to in all fields. So I'm an immunologist. I work with engineers. I also work with chemists, physis physicists. And the idea is to come up with I, um, cool projects that you can collaborate on from lots of different angles. And I'm a nine-month faculty member, first and foremost, but I also have three months, and the reason they brought me in is to start businesses. And we have actually started a business. Um, we actually just got some money from the National Science Foundation for a sustainable crustacean bait. I'm not going to talk about that. But we also have a, uh, an anti-aging molecule that we're, we're entering clinical trials. So the idea is, with the Joint School for Nanoscience, is when students have an idea, grad students, they can kind of foster it, their PhD program, their PhD project, and if there's a market there, they can go on and, and start a business and they'll be the CSOs and the CEOs of the company. So that's kind of the model that JSNN, um, it's a little different from most academic universities. So it's kind of, a, it's not really an incubator, but it has some of those aspects to it. So as I mentioned, I, I work with nanomaterials. One of the nanomaterials I work with are called fullerenes. Fullerenes are nanomaterials. All they are are simple carbon spheres. And they were, they were discovered by a um, uh, guy named Richard Small. He won the Nobel Prize for discovering these molecules. Um, and I'm going to just give you a brief overview of three of the projects we're working on. The first has to do with on the left hand side, that's a, this is just simply a carbon cage with three, for all you chemists in here, it has three nitrogens held together, uh, or three gadoliniums held together by nitrogen. The gadoliniums, if you know anything about magnetic resonance imaging, MRI contrast agents, that's a, it's a common technique when you go to the physician to try to diagnose disease. Well, the beauty of what, uh, this one is more sensitive and you can actually target this particular mag, uh, MRI contrast agent. So I'm going to talk about diagnostics and then theranostics. These are very potent antioxidants. Everyone knows what antioxidants is. They, they counteract reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species, some people argue that's the, why, the reason why we age. All diseases are associated with some type of reactive oxygen species. And so I'll talk about some therapeutics we're doing with that. And then on the final slide, I'll talk about blending the two. So giving a physician the possibility of diagnosing a disease and also treating it at the same time. So as I mentioned, the first molecule is an MRI contrast agent. The problem with current MRI contrast agents is you can't target them. And when I mean target, and target them, diseases, most diseases have certain biomarkers. Cancer has certain biomarkers that are unique to it. But this particular disease is atherosclerosis. So that what you're looking at, at the top, this is the aorta of a descending mouse who has atherosclerosis. So if you look at the very top, you can see, if you see, look here, 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 and here you can see it gets wider. And what this represents is that contrast agent lighting up the plaque. So when you get atherosclerosis, you get what's called plaque in your blood. And when it ruptures, that's when you have a heart attack or a stroke. 
So we gave these mice atherosclerosis, and this slide just illustrates our ability to target that mouse and show that it has plaque in the arteries. So it gives it what, what, what the end goal is to give physicians a new tool to diagnose atherosclerosis and potential vulnerable plaque. The plaque is getting ready to rupture. Um, we also dabble with certain inflammatory diseases. As I mentioned, atherosclerosis is a huge disease. And what you're looking at here is a mouse aorta. This big thing right here is plaque. That's when you eat too many cheeseburgers. That's what happened to your arteries. This is another illustration. But if you actually give the fullerenes, the buckyballs is the other term for them, if you give them fullerenes in the water, you can see that it completely prevents this plaque buildup. And as a scientist, I'm interested in the mechanisms of that. We do a lot of biochemistry and um, signal transduction and immunology. Um, and you can see at the very top, those are different fullerenes that um, you can see how the lesions without fullerenes are very thick, but with fullerenes, um, the lesions are barely there. So diagnostics, therapeutics for atherosclerosis, and I'm going to turn the, and talk about cancer. You've probably all heard of glioblastoma. It's brain cancer. It's a very um, hard disease to treat. So we... what with this picture on the left with the green and the yellow is a theranostic. So the little, the little round balls are the MRI contrast agent that will give the physician a, a way to uh, visualize where the brain cancer is. It's intercalated with a micelle, which is the green and the yellow, and it has a drug in it, doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is a, is a cancer drug that's very toxic. So what we're trying to do is target the, the brain cancer. And for some reason, glioblastoma cells have this, going back to the biomarker, when I mentioned biomarkers, they have this IL-13 receptor. So we decorated this theranostic with IL-13 ligands, so they'll bind to the, just bind to the glioblastoma cancer cells. And let me just focus your attention to this one because it's the most striking. So this is a mouse brain. We look at an MRI. And if you inject them with human glioblastoma cells, look down here, these are cell glioblastoma cells. They quickly overcome the mouse and the mouse dies. But if you first give our, our, our mouse uh, the theranostic, you can see that it prevents that glioblastoma from growing in the, in the uh, mouse brain. So that's just an overview of what we're doing. Um, if you have questions about my business, we can talk about that. But if you have questions about my uh, professorship duties, I'll be happy to answer any questions.